This video was made possible by patrons like Stephen W. Thanks Stephen. If you sign up now you can get an exclusive TLDR lanyard absolutely free. Find out more at the end of the video. Before we get started talking about the weirdness in the US stock market, this is not financial advice and we are not qualified financial advisors. Also, we're not saying there is or isn't going to be a crash, we're just going to analyse some indicators and their historic records. Qualifications aside, let's get into it. So anyone who pays even the slightest bit of attention to the financial markets will have noticed for the last few years the stock markets have been doing pretty well, especially the S&P 500, which tracks the 500 biggest companies in America. Since March 2009, when the market started recovering from the 2008 financial crisis, the S&P had risen from about 770 points to about 4,380 today. That means if you'd invested $100 in the S&P in March 2009, today you'd have about $570. That's an annual compound interest rate of about 15%, which means your investment would have increased by 15% each year. If that already sounds high, consider the fact that if you'd invested your money in the FTSE 100, which tracks the top 100 UK companies, you'd only have $190 today, or a 5% annual return. If you'd invested your money in gold, you'd get only a slightly higher return of about $195. Just looking at a graph of the S&P 500 should give you a sense of how wild the returns have been recently. This might also be the longest bull market in S&P history. A bull market is basically when the prices are going up. When prices are going down, it's called a bear market. Now, if we exclude the very temporary crash in March 2020 when coronavirus first hit, that means that the current bull market has lasted over 12 years, making it the longest ever. It depends how you define bull market, but essentially S&P 500 bull markets usually last around 5 years. The second longest bull market was known as the Great Expansion and lasted just less than 10 years, from October 1990 to March 2000. It's worth saying that the Great Expansion was followed by a two-year bear market when the S&P fell by about 45%. Anyway, you get the point. Stocks have been going up for a really long time, so unsurprisingly, quite a few people expect them to come down. So in this video, we're going to take a look at three indicators. The Schiller price to earnings ratio, the so-called Buffer index, and the CBOE skew index, which all suggest that today's bull market is coming to an end soon. Let's start with the Schiller price to earnings ratio. Essentially, a price to earnings ratio, or PE, takes a company's inflation adjusted earnings from the last 10 years and compares them to the stock market valuation. To calculate a PE, you just take the company's stock valuation, then divide it by their average single year earnings across the previous 10 years. For example, let's say I run a YouTube channel that, on average, has earned about $1,000 per year over the last 10 years, and is valued at $10,000. That channel would have a PE of 10. If it only earned $500 per year, it would have a PE of 20. Now, the Schiller PE is basically applied to the whole of the S&P. To do this, you take the total market valuation of the companies in S&P, known as the total market cap, and divide it by the sum of the average earnings of all the companies. Historically, the Schiller PE has sat between 10 and 20, meaning that market valuation has been about 10 to 20 times more than the average annual earnings. Today, the Schiller PE is at about 38, and there are some specific culprits. Tesla is a classic example, with a PE of about 650. That's actually come down from a high of about 1,300 in January, which means that Tesla's valuation was 1,300 times its annual revenue. Now, while this might sound mad, this doesn't necessarily mean that Tesla is overvalued. If you think Tesla's revenue is going to dramatically increase in the future, then, even when measured by P-E ratio, Tesla might be a good investment. Nonetheless, today's Schiller P.E. suggests that the S&P is currently overvalued, at least by historical standards, and is therefore due a correction. As you can probably see from the graph, when the Schiller P.E. gets too high, it's usually followed by a crash. On to the second indicator, the so-called Buffett indicator. The Buffett indicator, named after Warren Buffett, essentially takes the total market cap and divides it by US GDP. If the Buffett indicator gets too high, this indicates that the price of the S&P doesn't reflect the actual American economy. Today's Buffett indicator is about 230%, the highest it's ever been. 
Now, it's worth saying that the average Buffett value has slowly increased over time, but even when this is taken into account, today's Buffett value is remarkably high. As you can see from the graph, high Buffett values usually precede a crash. This sort of makes sense because when the S&P is way ahead of the actual economy, that suggests that it's being driven by speculation instead of actual economic progress. The third indicator we're going to talk about is the SBOE SKU index. Essentially, the SKU index looks at what investors think is going to happen over the next 30 days by analysing out-of-the-money option contracts. Out-of-the-money option contracts basically give the buyer the right to buy or sell a share at a price that it is currently not trading at. The SKU index uses this data to see how much investors are insuring against a future crash by comparing the differences between the price of options that give the buyer the right to buy shares and the cost of options that give the buyer the right to sell shares. The higher the difference, the more investors are expecting and insuring against a crash. Today's SKU index is the highest it's been for the past 10 years, suggesting that investors are insuring against a crash more than ever. So, those are the three indices that suggest that the bears are right and today's bull market is coming to an end. Obviously, this doesn't prove that there will be a crash. Bulls will tell you that the SKU index has proved remarkably poor at predicting future crashes, and people have been saying this sort of thing for ages. It's also worth noting that while the S&P's growth looks stratospheric in a linear graph like the one we showed earlier, there's an argument that because the stocks grow at a percentage of their previous value, they're better represented on a logarithmic graph. On a logarithmic graph, the recent growth doesn't look completely unprecedented. Nonetheless, this has been a seriously long bull market, and it's at least true that those indicators suggest that we should expect a downturn sometime soon. So, as a last thing, if you're watching this, you're probably thinking it's worth waiting for a crash before investing in the stock market. However, it's worth noting that according to data from 1960 to 2021, the chances of you buying into the market at an all-time high and then seeing a 20% drop at any time after that is just 40%. Essentially, though the S&P is at an all-time high, there's a 60% chance that you won't immediately hit a crash and your investment won't fall by 20% at any time, at least according to history. We're not saying that you should or shouldn't invest definitively, it's just an interesting stat, and even at all-time highs, most investments are fine. What do you think of this whole situation? Do you think we're due a crash, or will the good times keep coming? Let us know in the comments below. As I said at the start of the video, we're running a Patreon promotion whereby every Patreon paying more than $5 a month can get an absolutely free, never-for-sale lanyard. To claim yours, just sign up to the TLDR Patreon, and then click the link to the store. Signing up not only snags you a lanyard, but also gets you other perks like early access to videos, exclusive live events, merch discounts and more. Find out what you can get and sign up by clicking the link in the description. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible.